So just what do all these artists have in common? All of these artists use a form of finger picking that has become known as Travis picking. It is named after this gentleman right here, Merle Travis. He was not the first to employ this style, but he certainly popularized it. And what that is, is his thumb strikes bass notes on the beat. One, two, three, four. All of the melody and the accompaniment is placed on top of that. Travis picking is very versatile and can be used in many styles of music, including folk and blues. Here is a partial list of many more artists that also use this technique. So let's begin our course of study by showing you some common Travis picking patterns and then show you how to add some melody to a steady bass. One of the best ways to get used to the thumb playing on the beat is to play what's called an alternating pattern where the thumb alternates between the fingers one and two and three and four and each time I count a number the thumb is on that beat. One of the things you'll want to do when you switch chords is to be aware of where the root in that chord is. Keep all the other notes in the pattern the same but the first third beats should be the root of the new chord. So when I go to G, I'm hitting the sixth string, the rest of the notes stay the same. Notice that the roots of each of these chords are circled as we play through these four measures. An important concept in this style of finger picking is to play just the notes that are needed in the left hand. We use the full D chord. When we went to the G chord, I simply played fingers two and three, as I never hit the fifth string. When I went to the A7 chord, instead of putting both fingers down, I simply put down my second finger on the second fret. This allows you to have nice clean notes without the potential for bumping into other strings. The next step up in your Travis picking will be to play two notes at the same time. This is called a pinch when you play the thumb with a finger note. This pattern here is probably the most common used by folk singers. It goes one, two, and three, and four. One, You again will want to reflect on what the root note is when switching chords so that you can change your thumb to that string. So on a C chord you would play the root note on the fifth string with your pinch, keeping all the other notes in the pattern the same. And here's a familiar song that uses the pattern we just went over. I sometimes refer to this as the puff pattern. See if you can hear it. Using the previous pattern, you begin to get a sense on how to track a melody as you are picking. The highest note of the pattern was the melody note. Puff the magic dragon, live by the sea. Since the melody came down, I switched my G chord to get my pinky on the third fret of the second string, which was the melody note. At that point, if your fingers were playing strings 1 and 2, they now move over to 2 and 3 and play the same pattern. Many Travis pickers, including Merle Travis himself, used a thumb pick to help bring out the bass notes. At the same time, Merle Travis only used his index finger to pick up all the treble notes. Other players such as Doc Watson and John Prine did the same. Some players like Leo Kaki used a thumb and two fingers, while others still like Chet Atkins used a thumb and three fingers, almost a classical style. Speaking of John Prine, let's take a look at his favorite Travis picking pattern. Mm -hmm. 
You'll notice there's an accent on the fourth note of the pattern. It's all eighth notes, so it goes back to being an alternating pattern like our very first pattern. One and two and three and four and... So this brings up the concept of the word syncopation. Syncopation means that you accent a note that doesn't fall on a strong beat. Our earlier patterns really hitting beat one strong. On this one, he's hitting beat two and stronger. One and two and three and four and. And that's the sense of syncopation which happens in Travis picking all the time. Here's a series of chords using the John Prine pattern. I will play each chord twice and I will only use my index finger to pick up the high notes just like John Prine does. One, two, three, four. Another thing you will notice in the music of pieces that are written out in Travis style is sometimes the chords have a slash with another letter name below it and these simply are known as slash chords the slash represents a bass note that they're wanting you to play different than the root so in the example we will be showing you we have a d7 slash f sharp here's the f sharp bass note instead of hitting the d first and this is a d7 slash f sharp the full D7 would be up here, but we're not going to play that string, so we'll leave it off. So here's an example using slash chords with the chorus of Dust in the Wind. We'll go back and use the puff finger picking pattern. <laughs> Let's now explore the concept of adding melody notes while maintaining a steady bass. To do this you'll want to pick out your melody on the high strings. We'll be in the key of C and we're looking for a melody that has mostly quarter notes so that we can play those notes on the beat when we first learn to do this. So we'll use the song Jingle Bells. The first melody note is the open E string. So we will put that on top of our steady bass, which is holding a C chord. Back and forth from string 5 to 4. And here is the first line of the song. notice a lot of Travis pickers dampening the bass strings which is to put the fleshy part of your palm against the bass strings right here by the bridge you still get the tone of the string if you move up too high you just simply kill the string so it gives you a nice thuddy sound without it Sometimes your bass notes overpower your melody notes. Many blues style Travis pickers use finger picks in addition to their thumb pick. Just gives them more power to pull out their melody notes. A concept sometimes used when Travis picking in the blues style is to have a drone bass string. Instead of worrying about alternating your bass notes, just keep hitting the same string. You can add your melody on top of that. When you're in E blues, you'll also be using A and B chords, so you can move that concept up, and in this case use the A string for the drone string. You'll see many Travis pickers sometimes bring their thumb over to catch a bass note. 
And that's happening in this case when I do the B lick in an E blues, I'll pick up the thumb on the seventh fret of the sixth string to give me that B note while I play my lick. Here's a lick designed to show you what's ahead in your Travis finger picking journey. So your next level will be to add some eighth notes to your melody instead of playing just quarter notes. When you do that, be sure that your thumb doesn't try to join your fingers on any of the notes that fall in between the beats. So we'll take that lick and put it into a 12 bar blues. So you'll also play the lick in A and in B bringing your thumb over. Mm -hmm. 